Now that you know how machine learning works in general and what kind of algorithms there are, of course, you are very eager to start applying them yourselves to um, supervised text classification. And in this case, we will look at how to do supervised text classification in R. Um, the goal of supervised text classification is to predict some sort of class, for example, the sentiments from the features, for example, the word frequencies. Generally, this requires a large amount of manually coded training data, and it works very well, for example, for things like topic classification, but also for um, uh, sentiments of things like movie reviews um, or other things where there's a clear relation between the input words and the output class. Now, you've worked with, with documentary matrices before, and very often, of course, they're very high dimensional in the sense that you have thousands or tens of thousands of columns. And the data is also very sparse. And that means that um, of your, your tens of thousands of columns, most of the words don't actually occur in most of the documents. And uh, because the data, the, the matrix is so large, it can be tens of thousands by tens of thousands. It is very important to actually keep using a sparse matrix representation um, to represent those rows and columns. And what that means is that the computer doesn't store all the zeros, it only stores the non-zero entries. So um, if only 1% of your words are used in an average document, it means that the size of your matrix is actually reduced by 99%, which will drastically reduce memory consumption, but also actually make everything a lot faster. Now, if you look at the model performance, um, what are actually the main drivers of this model performance? So uh, why is it sometimes uh, a very good task for machine learning and why not? The, the most important thing is probably the task difficulty, right? Predicting uh, whether Trump occurs in a document is a very easy task. Predicting whether a document is positive or negative is more difficult and predicting whether um, in a document there is um, a pattern of power use where minorities are oppressed might even be a more difficult task, right? So the, the difficulty of the task is the biggest driver of model performance. The second one is the, the amount of training data. So if you have only a couple hundred trained documents, even a simple task will not be done well. If you have tens of thousands of documents, it will almost always outperform a model trained on only a thousand documents. The, the third driver of model performance is the choice of features. Um, so you give it the features, right? In your documentary matrix, the features are the words. Um, but also there, you, you saw earlier that you make lots of choices, right? So you, you can lemmatize them, you can stem them, you can trim it, you can remove certain words, you can keep certain words, etc. Um, you can also have words that are not directly, features that are not directly words. For example, you can make engrams where, you, where words that occur next to each other, like New York, are joined as one word. You can use the dilemma instead of the word. You can filter on part of speech text. You can alter part of speech text, etc. Right. So there's lots of ways where you can use features, and you can think about as a researcher how those features might be important for your case. For example, if you're looking at sentiments, not good is radically different from good, right? So that is an indication that an engram might actually be a good idea here because then not good will be a feature for the machine learner. While if you have not and good separately the machine learner might not actually be able to combine those, especially if it's a simple model like a naive Bayes uh, model. And finally, there's the, the choice of algorithm, the tuning of algorithm, the setting of the hyperparameters, etc. Now, a lot of discussion in the literature is often about this fourth part, right? Which, which algorithm to pick, how to tune it, which hyperparameters to choose, etc. Um, but what you find is that this is actually not the most important part, right? So the most important driver of performance um, are your, your task difficulty and your, your amount of training data. The next one is the choice of features and the choice of algorithms actually the, the least important driver generally of model performance. So it doesn't matter that much, the much more important is to have enough training data and choose your features correctly. Now, how do we do this in R? Um, in R, we actually have pretty good support for supervised class certification in the Quantita text models package. It has a naive base and it has support vector machines. Um, there are two packages that are used for machine learning, um, which uh, are not so good for text classification, especially carrots. Uh, that's the go-to package for normal supervised machine learning, but it doesn't do sparse matrices very well, which makes it not very well suited for text classification problems. Um, second, tidy models um, is under active development. It, it looks to be a very good replacement of carrot that will probably take care of those problems, but at the moment it's very early in development, so we don't really know where it's going. 
Now, um, looking back at how to use Quantita text models, uh, what you normally use your, your, your process, you first start with the normal tidyverse functions to do all your train test splits um, to do your analysis. Huh? So for that, you don't need any special functions. Then for the modeling stage, you use a function called text model underscore NB for naive base or underscore SVM for support vector machines. And you give it the training document feature matrix and the target classes. And the second step is to use the predict function, um, giving it the model that you trained in the first step and the document feature matrix for your test data. And this will return a vector of predictions that you can then compare with the right classes to do performance analysis or which you can, um, which you can then use in your substantive modeling if this is your, your production stage. Um, we made a handout for this um, on the, the GitHub uh, repository, which is called Supervised Text Testification, which will take you through all these steps and shows how you can use them.